That's up to you. Sean, for us to live here. And all this news about the crypto space and FTX and BlockFi and you name it, right? We keep hearing about all these terrible things that are going on, how there was cross-threading between the walls that shouldn't have been happening. We're looking at with FTX and Alameda, how maybe they were trading client capital. Um, and I thought this would be a great time to bring up a little bit of a history lesson to show how often these things continuously happen to retail investors and how to better protect yourself. So without further ado, let's jump on in. First concept I want to share is this idea of stop hunting. Okay, yes, just like it sounds, stop hunting. Stop hunting is a very well-known strategy wherein the broker is attempting to force market participations out of their positions. They do this by forcing or driving the price of an asset to a level where they know that their clients have actually already put in stop losses. So back when I first got started in Forex trading, which I very rarely dabble in now, I only use it for hedging today. Um, back in these early days, the margin that you were allowed to have right out of the gates was 200 to one. Okay. So in the early days of Forex trading, and I'm talking about in the US, it's an important distinction. I'm going to explain it in a second here, but it's an important call out that this is in the US. When I first got started in Forex, we were trading at 200 to one margin levels. Now you might say to yourself, wow, that sounds completely wild. And in theory, it is wild, but you have to remember um, currency moves in teeny tiny increments, right? They move in pips. So um, that was in a sense necessary because you had to have the ability to really grow the position. Otherwise the profit would be so small, you would need you know billions of dollars to make any kind of a living doing it. So two things, stop hunting. And we know there was massive leverage. There was a third part of this as well that really reminds me of what's going on with the current crypto situation. So this idea of introducing brokers and I'd be with someone who would go out and essentially advertise, hey, join this crypto. I'm sorry, listen to me already. Talking about crypto. Join this FX broker. You can trade all the major pairs, US, USD, um, Euro, JPY, right? You name it, <laughs> Australian, New Zealand, et cetera. And they would basically show all these great returns people were having, how they had you know, excellent execution, really tight spreads on the trades. You know, Things that as a trader were super important. You need to have a really tight spread so that your chance of making profit was that much higher. You also want to see really good overnight interest rates so you can make a lot of money and interest rates combined with that 200 to one leverage, you can make a really good living doing what was called the carry trade. Um, I've done a really deep dive Forex video twice, so I'm not gonna go into all the details, but just know this, for professional traders in the Forex space, there's a lot of money, money to be made, but it requires extreme understanding of risk mitigation, not just your standard um, equity mitigation, but really be able to look at the macroeconomic factors and how quickly they can change. At the end of the video, I'll tell you a quick story of how I got absolutely crushed in, in Forex for those who want to hear it. Um, and when you think about all these factors, you've got people who are doing everything they can to get you to sign up for brokers, get your money in there. And then what they were getting was a piece of every dollar that you were trading. So every time you paid that spread, that introducing broker was getting a piece of it. And what was happening was they were basically just adding their fee onto what you were paying as a fee already. So you as a retail trader were getting crushed right off the bat in terms of having to have a higher spread than all the major bank participants and, and professional participants in that realm. Sounds kind of familiar to what's going on today, right? And much like what we saw with FTX and some of these <laughs> in Alameda Research and some of these other folks was they were looking for ungodly yield, massive amounts of yield based on sort of non-intrinsic factors. So with FX, a lot of the yield was coming from that 200 to one margin. With Forex, we start because they were essentially creating stuff out of thin air. And I agree that it's not exactly the same, but it's close enough to being the same. Creating false leverage is no different than creating a false currency add-on, uh, in my mind, in terms of being fraudulent. Now, one of the things we definitely heard was that Alameda was essentially trading against participants in the actual FTX platform. This is no different than what was happening uh, in the FX markets in the early 2000s. Now, I say all this because this keeps happening. It was happening in the FS, FX markets. Why? Because it was a heavily unregulated industry. Although there were some rules and regulations, they were very loose. And the reason they were very loose was because, for the most part, retail traders didn't exist. It started to get really popular. And as usual, it was online. We, <laughs> as a regulatory body in the US, really didn't have strategies in place to protect consumers. Now, again, I think for those of us who got in it back in those days, it was very different because it was doing your own research, doing your own due diligence, doing your own 
training. There wasn't a thousand, uh, you know, videos and uh, Twitter feeds and, you know, whatever else to tell you all the right things to do, which oftentimes are wrong anyways. But I just want to call that out. So we saw these things happen in the FX market. And what was happening was I would enter a trade, say, um, of course, you never use all of your margin. But just as an example, you're going to enter your trade and, and have it be a pretty good size. Um, and then you'd say, okay, cool. If it drops by 10%, I want to hit my stop loss. I can't even tell you how many times I would make a trade 30 seconds later, hit my stop loss. I'm out of my position at a loss. And then instantaneously, the price went right back up on the chart again. And over time, it was discovered that the brokers were actually stop hunting and quite literally targeting their own customers to take their money. So of course, now you're down 10% on your entire portfolio you're leveraged also. And you're like, what am I going to do? I have to trade out of it. The introducing brokers making a piece of the pie on every trade. The brokers literally stealing your money because they're trading against you. And they know where your stop loss is. You're entering it on their own platform. We saw the same thing with Madoff. Met with, with Bernie, we had introducing brokers or capital introdu introducers who were putting him in front of people who had money to invest. Fast forward, we know what happened with Madoff. We know what happened with FX. Well, for those who don't know what happened with FX, we saw major regulatory changes come in, introducing brokers are no longer allowed in the U.S. Margin was cut down to 50 to 1. Even some brokers are much, much less than that. It is still necessary if you're wondering. You do have to have some margin. Um, but all kinds of new rules and regulations came in. Um, and a lot of folks just simply are staying away from Forex now. It's too difficult to trade. I mean, when I tell you I literally was taking um, university classes on multi-country currency trading, I, I literally was doing that um, as part of being in a finance um, pathway. So I was definitely fairly well educated and had no idea why I was losing and come to find out I was being defrauded. Basically, they were targeting my trades to wipe me out consistently and constantly. Um, I'll tell you the end of the story later on. So we started happening with Bernie Madoff and other types of Ponzi's that exist, right? There's always someone who's telling you what a great deal this is. We've got these great things, these great numbers. Come to find out that money's never even getting invested. We're seeing it happen with um, currency trading today. And I think that there's a story to be told here is that anywhere where there's looseness around regulation or transparency, there's going to be a problem. And oftentimes, all of these companies share something in common. During the days of Forex, just like the days of currency and crypto, it's always offshore companies. They're always in different jurisdictions that are hard to track and understand. We don't always know where they're headquartered. Um, there was a big story that came out during the Forex days where someone went to the actual address listed on the website and it was like a janitor's closet in a building. It was nothing. It was just a fake room. Um, so when you think about the amount of money sloshing around these environments, billions, if not trillions of dollars and how they're instantaneously wiped out, there's a lesson here. And the lesson is stick within established markets <coughs> to protect yourself and your money. It doesn't mean you don't want to boost your yield and look for things that maybe are not vanilla or they're shiny and they're new. Hey, whatever, that's your business. But just be clear about how much of your net worth you're putting into things you, you maybe don't understand, or even worse, you think you understand, but don't. That's that's the biggest risk I think most investors have is thinking they're masters of what they're doing when they're really not. So what I want to do is just tell you a quick story of how quick macro events can happen and how it can crush you very quickly and really leave this video as just sort of a case study of how what we're seeing today has happened, has happened before that, has happened before that, going all the way back to the days of the robber barons who would literally short their own companies, wipe out shareholders and buy their shares back for pennies on the dollar. Anytime we have light regulation, we have huge risk. And the problem with huge risk is there's always going to be bad actors who are going to try to take your money. This isn't to say that the Forks market is broken. This isn't even necessarily to say that the crypto market is broken. I have my opinions about that, but just in general, you just have to make sure you understand how to identify, protect, and take action on this and be very careful who you're getting your advice from and how to do things, who to sign up with and understand, is this genuine advice coming from a good place or are people being paid a lot of money to push it towards you? Just like introducing brokers, just like athletes and famous YouTubers pushing FTX or whoever else for that matter. So uh, just, just to give you an idea of how crazy things can be with all this going on, <coughs> I had switched to a new broker after the regulations had changed and uh, I was in a massive trade, very well protected by the way, but there's, there are gaps within Forex that can happen. And um, I was in a big carry trade with the Turkish Lira and I had just made a, a pretty good trade, you know, essentially 
you know, back in, the, I was a kid during these days. So like, you know, for me, it was a big, it was a big trade. It was four figures, but it was also leveraged out. Um, and as I make the trade, I feel great about it. Tons of research, tons of technical analysis, tons of macro understanding of the, of the general swing of what the position was. I turn on the news and there's a tank rolling down the middle of the street. There's a military coup. And just like that, it absolutely crushed <laughs> and completely wiped my account out. Um, and I think about lessons like that and how important it is that it happened, frankly, that even with all the research in the world, all the due diligence, all of the planning, one wild event can shift an entire macro in an instant. And this is since that moment, I have really made it my life to understand risk, risk mitigation, hedging strategies, everything I possibly can to protect myself. And I've always been able to do that since then. So I wanted to just leave you with that. And always make sure that as you're looking into yield boosting strategies, ways to make more money than you are in your general approach to investing, make sure you really understand what those those black swan events could be and recognize that they can happen a lot more than you think they can, right? So just make sure you're prepared and built out for that kind of a risk strategy. So with that, not the most exciting video today, but I wanted to share it because I keep hearing things like, how did this happen? It's like, well, team, this happens a lot. It happens constantly. It happens when you're in unregulated markets with bad actors. And that's just the reality of it. So with that, I'm going to cut it right there. Um, appreciate you watching as always. Let me know if there's any of the topics you'd love me to, <laughs> to uh, talk about. So thanks, everybody. Have a good afternoon. We'll see you. Bye, all.